Hello. Let me first of all show you something which has really nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about in the next couple of minutes. Uh, this is a rendering of um, a strange object with lots of dots on top of it. Actually, the dots are rendered particles. That's the amazing thing. Arnold does render particles. And I didn't change a thing here. That They are the standard little dots which you know as standard particles. Uh, I show another rendering in another light setting. Uh, by the way, it's uh, that beautiful 32-bit studio light lighting setup. So this is the object now with all the little dots here. The shader here is a mixture between 100% chrome and 100% white. And uh, it's, it's, it's a nice thing to mix shaders in Arnold. You use one of the presets and just say, okay, I want 75% of the previous shader mixed with that new shader. It's just lovely. And we, all, of course, in, in the Chrome environment, we need reflections. And the 32-bit studio lighting system, of course, has interesting lights at the top here, which reflect here very nicely. Okay, uh, let's close this and close this. And that's the scene I just rendered for you this thing here and now let's run the simulation that's about the stage I rendered but I can of course render this stage here and maybe from this angle with this lighting uh, setting here and I go to Arnold and render it and that's what it looks like now it's a NURBS sphere deformed by just one field it's um, a, a vortex field which turns it around. But as you can see clearly here, and now we're in the middle of our topic of today's tutorial, these parts of the sphere, the top and the bottom ones, keep pretty much the same situation as before. Whereas this thing tries to rotate, the, the center of that sphere rotates, rotates like mad. How did we achieve this? Because we cannot individually select particles. You will find it in my blog. Okay. Just before we create a new scene, keep an eye on the top and the bottom of that sphere. They do swing back and forth a little but basically they keep in the same situation as before. Of course, we basically destroy uh, uh, the topology of that pretty nice NURBS sphere here because it just rotates, this, this part rotates too massively. What I mean by topology, which is has gone a little bit mad here, uh, that's what I basically mean. Um, when you click on the geometry here, you see uh, places like these. They're not really nice. Uh, there's too much closeness of the curves here. They're called is iso or isopalms. Uh, and uh, these breakpoints here, you, you should re uh, convert it to a polygon if you like this shape and then relax the, the UVs in this case. Okay, we create a new scene and we'll go to curves and surfaces. We could use it with uh, this th same thing with the polygon as well uh, and create that NURBS sphere. The NURBS sphere is topologically, mathematically extremely simple and that makes it very very elegant uh, if you save that scene it's basically only a couple of bytes whereas a sphere which is as round as this one made in the polygon world is quite heavy actually so um, we can uh, create more subdivisions here that's good and now um, in order to make this soft, we need to go to Special Effects, that's FX here. And here we have the N particles. So with this sphere selected, we go to N particles and we make the thing a soft body. Now, 
we need the opt-in box here and I'll show you why that is. We need settings like this. Duplicate, make the copy soft. Hide the non-soft object and make the non-soft a goal. That's the most important thing. Make the non-soft body a, a goal. Uh, the goal weight is 0 0.5 by default, which is fine. Let me just go back here. The default settings are like this. So instead of create options, just make soft. We want to make uh, the duplicate soft. We want to duplicate it and make the copy soft. That's one thing we want to do. And we don't need to see the original object anymore, that sphere here. So we'll hide it after the process has been done. And the non-soft body, this one, a hard shell, has to be the goal for the soft body. So the soft body, when we start deforming it, wants to sort of go back to that original uh, shape of a perfect sphere uh, with a weight of 0 0.5. If we created it with a weight of 1, it wouldn't do anything because it would be stiff, stuck, glued to the original surface, whereas when we reduce the weight to 0, it wouldn't care about where it came from. So this is the way we create it. Now in the particle world you see the particles here and Arnold will actually render them. You just saw them in the rendering. You cannot pick them individually. When you pick, try to pick them you pick that box which, which is this group here uh, and it's called copy of NURB sphere or whatever. Um, when we run the simulation now nothing happens. That's pretty obvious. Nothing happens because we haven't applied a field. So let's introduce the vortex field now. I click on the particle systems here. Uh, the particle system, it's only one. And by the way, I have a nucleus which runs, which drives the whole end particle system. And now I'll go to fields and solvers and introduce a vortex field. And we let's keep them uh, the field to the default settings here and uh, run the simulation. You see a little bit, a little bit of wobbling. There are two ways to increase that wobbling and please pay attention where the parameters are which you have to adjust in order to see some effect here. There are two things. The vortex field currently has a magnitude of 5. When I raise this to 100 it will be working stronger of course but you still see it doesn't do very much it just wobbles around in in the vortex direction and uh, that's basically all it does uh, so let's reduce this again to like like a 10 maybe the other parameter which is crucial here is the goal weight that is the thing we just set to 0 0.5 that's the attitude of the soft body, how it wants to approach the shape of the NURB sphere, which is currently hidden. We don't see it. It would be in our way anyway. So um, uh, we need to go to the particle system and look for the goal weight. Where is it? It's right here. Goal weights and objects. Here is the 0 0.5 we just had. Let's reduce this to 0 0.1. And now you see the ver vortex, the rotation, works quite dramatically. If we uh, change this to 0 0.25, it goes smoother, but still it does some active wobbling here. So let's uh, extend the playback range to 400 frames. We want this wobbling to be stronger in the middle than at the uh, at the top and at the bottom. How do we do this? Uh, that's something very basic and often overlooked. You can change the attitude, the parameters of individual particles. I select this one. It doesn't individually select, but I can select it. I'll show you in a second. We need to go to what is called per particle attributes. Per particle. Each particle here 
even if you have 100,000 particles, has a number and here we can direct them how to behave. We can add dynamic er attributes, for example, uh, opacity or color to the particle. So some uh, particles will be more yellow, the other ones more blue. But we are interested in the goal, the goal which is currently set to 0 0.25, I guess. That's what we did. Um, so what we'll, what we'll do now is we right mouse click here and we won't create an expression not a runtime expression before or after dynamics, not a ramp, but we want to open the component editor. It doesn't really do anything, it just opens a window. And that's what the window looks like. We have springs, we have weighted deformers, rigid skins, etc. and the particles, that's what we are interested in. Now we need to pick the particles and consider the particles are not objects but uh, components. So let's press the key F8 which brings us to the component world and now when we for example select this particle it is selected and here we have the particle 76 with its position, its velocity, its mass and its lifespan and <laughs> its goal weight which is here in the attribute editor set to 1 because you can now it's meant to play with that parameter now. That's what we'll do. So let's minimize this window, go to the side view and select well those particles of the soft body, the ones in the middle. And you will see when I select them in the side view they're selected all over, all around. Okay, now I reopen the component editor and it shows me a long list now which doesn't look very sexy but it certainly is very effective. Here I have the particle numbers. I don't care about the particle numbers right now. I could set them all to, a, to the same position now in Z for example uh, but I won't do this. Instead I'll go to the goal PP weight and changes. I can change it one by one but I'll change all of them. So I click in that field and holding the left mouse button pressed down I select them all. Now this thing provides me with an entry field so um, I want to reduce the goal of the middle particles to say 0 0.1 so they don't really care much about the original shape where they come from. Now you see I've changed them all and you will anticipate what the animation looks like now. We can go back to uh, the beginning of the animation and select, maybe in the side window, this row and this row and go to Goal PP, right mouse click, open the component editor for the selected particles. Now there are particles from 48 to um, whatever, and leaving out several others because they're in the middle and uh, I can give them a goal weight of say 0 0.2. So they're sort of in the middle between the uh, the majority of the uh, particles and the ones in the center. So this is <laughs> what the effect is now. I want to go to the top window which is here and just select just a few like the ones here to warp them a little bit to make them more funky and uh, I go to right mouse click goal PP component editor they are the ones here and I select them all and I give them a value of say 0 
seven. So they are quite interested in keeping where they started. So a couple of particles selected, they want to remain there and they resist the motion. You see? Now you get a, a very stressed material, of course. And uh, you might want to reduce the magnitude now to 5. That's what the default settings were. So it's a weaker field now. But you see the last manipulations we did with the particles which need to stick at the original position gives that whole object a lot of stress. And of course we can load the scene now from uh, um, 32 bit studios and render this. Shall I do this? Okay, we import here they call 32 bit studios lighting scenes Arnold in this case. Here they are and I just render it away and this is what the object looks like with the default settings of this light. Uh, I can assign a new material now, an Arnold shader, surface shader and here I go to presets and I want for example a brushed metal and I blend it with a current shader which is a white very glossy shader by say only 50%. Choose another angle of view like this one for example and Arnold will render the particles and the object. So the bottom line is you can change the attributes of individual particles. In this case the particles which create a soft body. It applies to all particles. You can shoot particles out of an em emitter and tell some particles, particle 1250 to, to 2480, you can tell them to become all of a sudden white or die off immediately whereas the rest stays where they are. This is just an example with soft body dynamics. Have fun.